had victory on the cross, that we need no longer be fearful of anything because you have come to save us and to set us free. We thank you, Lord, that we have a home in heaven. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. And so, Father, as we just come before you this morning and we worship you, Well, good morning and welcome to the Salvation Army Tussin Ranch. We are so glad you chose to join with us in worship this morning on our online service. I want to let you know that God is doing a new thing amongst us. In fact, His Word says, Consecrate yourselves today because tomorrow I will do amazing things amongst you. And I believe we're living in the tomorrow where God wants to do amazing things in the lives of His people. Just this weekend that's gone by, we celebrated the risen Savior. God wants that same resurrection power, which He gives to you and I. As Paul says in Ephesians 1, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be opened, that you may see what has been deposited in your life. God gives you resurrection power. Power to live and power to lead and power to walk in faith. So as we walk in faith, know that God, the great I Am, walks with you, giving you confidence and assurance that all is well 
when you put your trust in Him. So as we worship this morning, may you experience the resurrected God working through you and in you to accomplish far more than you possibly thought was possible. God's best and God's blessing upon you today. Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as we begin a new day in worship, as we celebrate your goodness and your mercy, Lord, I pray today that we will have a fresh encounter with you. We pray, Lord, that we will experience the risen Savior, that we'll experience your power as we live and lead and work with those around us, that we'll be a lighthouse, that we'll be an ambassador of your grace, your mercy, and your love. I pray, Father, that you'll bless us as we celebrate your goodness today. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Good morning, Tustin Ranch family. We're glad that you can join us online today. If this is your first time tuning into our online service, go to satrconnect.org, fill in some basic info. If you'd like to connect with us and get more information or have questions about what we're doing here at the Salvation Army Tustin Ranch, for all your giving, your tithing, and offering info, go to satrgiving.org, and you'll find all the latest information on how to invest in what we're doing here at Salvation Army Tustin Ranch family. All right, let's continue our worship this morning. Let's sing Lord of all creation. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens.
Zion tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy. early in the morning early in the morning I will celebrate the light when I stumble in the darkness I will call your name by night God of wonders beyond all galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty, you are holy, holy to the Lord of heaven and earth, to the Lord. And sing hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah to the Lord of heaven. One last time, hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. God of wonders, God of wonders beyond dark galaxy, you are holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty, you are holy, oh precious Lord, Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, holy, holy, the universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, holy. As we continue in our worship this morning, we invite you to sing from wherever you are. Give a shout of praise, a proclamation of what the God of love is doing in your life. Every soul. Every soul, every beating heart. Every nation and every tongue, come find hope in the love of the Father. All creation will bow as one. Let them rise, see the risen sun. Jesus, Savior forever and after. This is love. Jesus came and died and gave his life for us. Let our voices rise and sing for all he's done. Our fear is overcome. Our God is love. Love. 
Every distant and broken heart, every prayer, every outstretched arm, finding hope in the love of the Father. H to H, let His praises rise. All the glory for all of time. Jesus, Savior, forever and after. This is love. Jesus came and died and gave His life for us. Let our voices rise and sing for all He's done. Our fear is overcome. Our God is love. Our God is love. H to H, we will be singing in the light of all He's done. All the earth. Everyone singing in the wonders of His love. Age to age, we will be singing in the light of all He's done. All the earth, everyone singing. This is love. Jesus came and died and gave life for us. Let our voices rise and sing for all He's done. Our fear is overcome. Our God is God is love. Our God is love. Amen. Our God is love. If you believe it, say amen from wherever you are. Thank you, Lord. This morning, as we close out our series in 1 Peter, we remind ourselves that Peter's writing to the Christians in Asia Minor, Christians who are suffering and being persecuted for their faith. And we land in chapter 5, and we're going to be focusing on 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 7, where Peter tells us to give all of our cares to God because he cares for us. You know, life can be challenging, troublesome, and even scary sometimes. There'll be times where we don't even believe that there's anybody who is going to be there for us. We feel so alone. We feel like nobody cares. But the Bible tells us there is someone who is there and someone who cares. In 1854, Henry David Thoreau wrote that the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And I think that's still true today. There's a lot of people out there who are still filled with insecurities, doubts, and anxiety. A recent Gallup poll found that 60% of American adults suffer from daily stress and worry. Since the summer of 2019, the number of people feeling stressed has risen by 14%, and the number of people who are worried has risen by a startling 21%, meaning that there are around 55 million more worried adults in America today than there were in 2019. The top five things that people are worried about in the world are, firstly, COVID, secondly, poverty and social inequality, followed by financial and political corruption, health care 
And finally, crime and violence. People worry about money, about bills, the past, gossip, working, aging, death, and what other people think. They worry about safety and comfort, mistakes, what can go wrong, and people even worry about worry itself. But worry has never changed one circumstance from bad to good, and it often makes things worse. The truly destructive power of worry is that it clouds our judgment. And worry has this way of compounding a problem until it's all that we can see. Many of us spend sleepless nights trying to solve complex problems and all we accomplish is fixing them more firmly in our minds. And the Bible says that instead of being weighed down by our concerns, our worries, our anxieties, that we should give them over to God. Worry and anxiety, it's always been an issue. And that's why the Bible is filled with God telling us, don't do that. There are over 140 different verses in Scripture telling God's people, don't worry, don't be anxious, and don't be afraid. Back in the Old Testament, when Israel was trapped between the armies of Egypt and the impassable waters of the Red Sea, and they're facing certain death, Moses told the people, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, they will never be seen again. And then again, as Moses nears the end of his life and he's preparing to pass leadership of Israel over to Joshua, he once again reminds the people of Israel to be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid and don't panic, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you or abandon you. Psalm 23, it's loved by so many people because it declares exactly the same thing. It says this, Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So what the Bible's saying is that when the storm is outside, God is on the inside of it with you. David wrote this in Psalm 55, give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. Later in the gospel of Matthew, when Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount to the crowds, he said this, he says, I tell you, do not worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your lives? And then God repeats his promise of presence and care in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. He says, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. And of course, today, our text, which says, give all your cares and worries to God, for he cares about you. Not once does the Bible say, worry about it, stress over it, figure it out. But over and over again, the Bible clearly tells us, trust God. Well, it sounds simple enough, and I think that I could do that. What about you? Do you think that you could just trust God? Well, of course you could. But if it's that easy, why are so many people filled with doubts and fears and anxiety? You know, I think that when people get overwhelmed by anxiety and they are faced with scary situations that they can't control, they truly believe that no one is there and they truly believe that no one cares. Around 10 years ago, there was a study done at the University of Toronto where from their research, the psychologists concluded that when faithful religious people thought about religion and God, their brains responded in a way that let them take their setbacks in their stride and react with less distress to anxiety-provoking mistakes. 
In other words, just thinking about God helped people relax. Just thinking about God reduced their stress. And that's what uh, being a Jesus follower is all about. It's about thinking about God. And that's what church is all about. It's about thinking about God. It's, it's about worshipping. It's about giving worth to God. It's about acknowledging who God is and, and the worship that he is he should have. It's about focusing our attention on God. Everything you experience in worship should focus your mind on God and his love for you. From the songs that we sing to the prayers that we say and even the sermon, it should all remind you of who God is and how much you mean to him. We are promised that God will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in him, all those whose thoughts are fixed on him. Thinking about God is important, but it's not just enough to think about God. And it's certainly not enough to just believe that God is there. In order to be freed of our anxiety, we need to realize that God cares for us. And Peter reminds us, give all your worries and cares to God because he cares about you. You see, if you don't believe that you have a heavenly father who cares for you and believes that you are worth his time, then you will be anxious and you will rush about and you will worry. And that's why Jesus put so much emphasis on God being our heavenly father who cares for us. He emphasized it when he said this. He says, you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people who know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to those who ask him? In other words, God cares for you so much that he wants to give you everything that you need. He wants you to know that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. So there's nothing that you need to be afraid of in this world. God is with you and God cares for you. Jesus told his disciples not to worry about the necessities of life because your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. The way to forget our worries is to concentrate on the goodness and loving care of God and not on the problems that plague us. The more you think about God's goodness and who he is, the less that you'll think about your worries, anxieties and cares. All of our anxiety and all of our care can be given to God. The word here in verse 7 is the Hebrew word, for cast. So when Peter says, give your cares, what he's actually saying is cast your cares, which means throw them upon God. And that's exactly what we're called to do. Jesus deeply desires to carry our cares and he's invited us, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, on you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls because my yoke is easy to bear and the burden that I'm going to give you is light. You see, we're all encouraged to cast all of our cares, to give every single care that we have upon God. This means all of our small concerns as well as our big ones. We need to bring them all to Jesus. God desires for us to be trusting in him, to trust him with all of our cares, all of our sorrows, all of our problems, all of our needs, and even all of our questions. Nothing is too big for God, nor is anything too small. God knows our name. He knows the number of hairs on our heads. And if he cares about the new details of who you are, then he certainly cares about your small problems as well as the large ones. Peter says, give all your cares, all your worries and all your anxiety to God because he cares for you. And I want us to think about that just for a moment. God
God cares for you. He delights in caring for you. He delights in loving you. And our confidence rests in the fact that Jesus is con genuinely concerned for us. He got, you see, God cares for us so much that he gave Jesus for us. He gave Jesus as, as a sacrifice in our place. Jesus willingly gave up his life. He didn't have to, but he loved us so much that he came down from heaven and died on a cross for us. He did it because he loves us. He did it because he loves you and he cares for you. This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. You see, God loves us so much that he wants us to be with him. And he knows how hard it is for us to even believe he cares for us. So he doesn't ask for some deep and mystical theology to become Christians. All he asks for, from us is that we believe that he loved us enough to lay down his life for us. And, and we have to accept the fact that we don't deserve the safety of being in the same room as him. But if we did, that if we did decide that we don't want to live this way anymore, that we need to determine to make him the Lord of our lives and allow ourselves to be transformed into the creation, the new creation that he wants us to be. That's all he asks. Believe who he is. Accept the sacrifice and decide to make Jesus Lord of your life. Our God is not some uncaring, unfeeling and indifferent being. He loves you and he cares for you. So then cast all of your cares. Give him every single care that you have. Give it to God and let him care for you. What a remarkable difference will take place in our lives when we cast our cares on the Lord and begin to live in trust and with the confidence that he cares for us. You know, so many times in my life, I, I have experienced that deep loneliness. You know, where you're surrounded by circumstances and, and things are happening. And you just can't believe that anybody cares for you. But there's this moment where you come to the feet of Jesus. And instead of trying to fix all your problems, you just put them there. You know, I remember a point in my life where I just went, you know what, I can't live like this anymore. I can't be so worried and so anxious. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, God, I'm done. Do this and I bring them and I just gave them to the Lord. It was at that point in time that I experienced like this overwhelming love, the, the overwhelming warmth of God's presence. And I remember as I was praying, just how the weight just lifted off me. And I just went, you know what? It's true. God not only loves me, but he cares about me and he wants to carry it all. How much time do we waste carrying things that we don't need to carry? How much time do we waste worrying about things that we don't need to worry about? Give them to God. He loves us. He cares for us. Oh, how much He loves us. So we are His portion. So we are his portion and he is our prize Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes of grace 
Is an ocean we're all sinking. So heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. And I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way. Yeah, He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves. Yes, yeah, so Lord Jesus. Yeah, He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh. God, our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, that you do love us. We want to thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Son, Jesus, that just shows us how much you love us. And so, Heavenly Father, this morning, I'm praying for any person right now that's carrying heavy burdens, any person that is overwhelmed by care, worry and anxiety, Lord. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, that uh, as they're listening to us this morning, as they're singing in worship with us, Lord, that they're carrying those burdens, those cares, those anxiety, those worries, Lord, they're carrying them to you, Lord. And I'm, de I'm claiming, Lord Jesus, right now, Lord, that you will take those cares, that you will lift those burdens, Lord, and that you will replace it, Lord, not with a spirit of fear and timidity, but with a spirit of power and strength, Lord. Lord, that you will give victory this morning. And I'm declaring, Lord, that you will bring healing to those that are suffering, Lord, under the weight of anxiousness, of depression, Lord. I'm praying, Heavenly Father, that you will break those chains, Lord, that you will bring life, Lord, that you will bring healing, Lord. And those things, Lord, Lord, they will just fade into insignificance, Lord, when we experience your love, your care, Lord. And I'm praying this in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, the name of Jesus that is above every other name, the name of Jesus that brings victory, that gives freedom, Lord, that is salvation and is redemption, Lord, that brings new life. And I'm praying this, Lord, this morning in that powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, thank you for joining in worship with us today. Uh, my prayer is that you have heard God speak, that God's Word has been spoken deep into your hearts, that you've experienced His power afresh today. We pray that God will bless you and keep you through this week. If you are in the Tusson Ranch area in Tusson, join us in our live service every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. We warmly welcome you to join in fellowship with us as we meet with each other and encourage each other on the journey of life. God's blessing upon you. Let me pray God's blessing. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing upon us, your children. Lord, as we continue this week, may we press in and lean into you and trust you. Your word says, if we put our trust in you, then Lord, you, you will be faithful you will be true to your word, that you will allow us to experience all that you have on offer because, God, your promises for your children are yes and amen. Lord, be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.